human beings of Somerville and the world. Welcome to the show of how to be a human being that is joyful, creative, alive, passionate and expressive in the context of work. We spend, gosh, we spend so much time working. And when I talk to my friends and when I talk to some of the colleagues, they say, well, thank God it's Friday or, well, the weekend is over, unfortunately. And I don't want to live like that. I want to live in the world where work is celebration, where work is appreciated, and where each and every one of us and you can come to work from the standpoint of, I cannot wait to express myself. And so we are four human beings, <laughs> and I will introduce um, all of us in a moment. My name is Maria Shriko. And the topic of today's conversation and exploration and play is how to bring joy and creativity into your profession and work. And we thought that there is no workplace without music. So we prepared for the last month this amazing performance for you guys. And it's taking place live now of four professionals who flew from all over the world to support this international effort of Russian slash American performance of the child song, which is called Chiburashka. Chiburashka, for those of you who don't speak Russian, means an animal that looks very, very weird. It doesn't exist. This animal doesn't exist in nature. It's a hybrid between, it's difficult to even put words between what and what, like a cat, a dog, an elephant with big ears, it's brown, it has a little bit like a uh, nice tummy, probably from eating chocolate. So that poor thing in its voice wrote, wrote the following song. Please prepare for the world famous singer Maria Shiko. <laughs> I'm, I warmed up before the show just like Pavarotti does all the time, so I'm all set with the vocal cords. Here it goes. Я был когда-то странной игрушкой безымянной, которой в магазине никто не подойдет. А теперь я чебурашка, мне каждая дворняшка при встрече сразу лапу подает. Я был когда-то странный, мне не везло сначала, и даже так бывало, ко мне на день рождения никто не приходил. Теперь я вместе с Геной, он необыкновенный, он самый лучший в мире крокодил. Теперь я вместе с Геной, он необыкновенный, он самый лучший в мире крокодил. And I will tell you the background of the story. This poor animal that is called Chiburashka. When he was born, he didn't look like anyone else in this world. He looked, he was comparing himself to all the friends around. He thought, maybe I look like a dog. No, I don't. Maybe I look like a cat. No, I don't. <laughs> maybe I look like an elephant. No, I don't. And it was really sad. It was sad because nobody came to his birthday. Nobody bought him in a store. And so it ended up the feelings of loneliness and isolation, and I'm not like anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and so it took him some time, the life processes, some life experiences to fully accept himself and say, I will not try to be like anyone else. I will just be Chiburashka. And now everybody comes and in honor shakes my hand. So to relate this to work, we will explore the topics of how to be yourself and not lose yourself 
at workplace and also how to bring your unique individuality and creativity into the things we do. Now my honor, and I want some drumming, I want some drumming <laughs> to introduce <laughs> the honorable guests of the show. The first honorable guest goes to this beautiful lady. <laughs> Her name is Lindsay. Lindsay, would you say the most inspiring thing about yourself? Mm. Um, that I love trampolines. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. And then we have the next guest of the show. Please, a round of applause and anticipation. Brendan. Brendan. Hello, world. Hello, world. I love it. <laughs> what is the most inspiring thing about you? I'd say the most inspiring thing about me is that I really love myself. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and the next guest of honor, please, Tunde. What is the most inspiring thing about you? This is going to be my first Boston winter. <laughs> I love it. Pray for me. We, we pray and we send all the positive thoughts to this wonderful man. And I thought for all of us to get to know each other a little bit better, because in a good workplace, you need to have communication, relationships, and you want to also get a little bit private with people because if you just work with people and you don't know who they are, how they are, you know, what is inside of their heart, then it's really difficult to relate. Say you are predicting stock market and there is a lot at stock, <laughs> right? But then you don't know who the person is. So we'll find out all the wonderful participants today. So, I've prepared some cards for all of us and we'll randomly pull out a card and then read the question and then take a few moments in a sentence or a phrase to answer them. So, Lindsay, I'll give you the first choice. I, everybody will answer. Oh, wow, <laughs> I'm really going hard on the first question. It's, are you afraid talking about sex? Yes or no? Oh, is this a question for all of us? I think we'll just each say yes or no. It depends on with whom. <laughs> okay. No. No. The next question. What makes you laugh when things don't go my way? Uh, hmm. I think when people are just being really authentically themselves and being kind of quirky and usually they're not even aware that they're being strange and I find it very entertaining. <laughs> Uh, sometimes when I have a really bad day, it makes me laugh because mm. then it makes it a little bit of a better day mm. when I laugh. I like the absurdity of it, you know? Yeah. When something really ridiculous happens, you just like, you just have to laugh. You just, I mean, it, it kind of just proves that, you know, we're in this crazy random world that like, things can happen that you don't even expect. So I have a proposal because sometimes I laugh for no reason, I just decide I want to laugh. It's um, like part of the laughing yoga practice. So how about, <laughs> how about we just place our hands on our bellies and find that laughter inside of you just, and it can be the most ridiculous, ridiculous laughter that is right there, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 
That was like, if we just did this on the show, that was perfect. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> oh, here we go. What do you tolerate in your life that you're ready to drop tolerating? <clears throat> Ooh, tough question. Lack of assertive communication. Mm. Wow. I can relate to that. I would say for me, it's boundaries and saying no. Saying no when I feel I need to say no. For me, I want to stop tolerating being afraid. Mm. I don't want to be okay with being afraid anymore. I want to face my fears and uh, seek discomfort. Hmm. Uh, so my answer is kind of similar. Um, I want to stop tolerating doubt. And I think that... That doesn't mean not having doubt, because doubts come. Same with fear. Fear comes sometimes. Um, but I think changing my relationship to doubt and being like, oh, that's my doubting mind. I'm doubting this. I'm really doubting this. Or doubting myself, doubting decisions, doubting life, people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, to, to embrace it a little bit more and kind of even, I don't know, have, laugh at that or mm -hmm be kind towards it and not necessarily take my own doubts so seriously. Uh, 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 laugh at doubt. <laughs> 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 we already created a tool <laughs> of working with doubts. Can I pull the next card? <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> wow. Uh, what do you hate the most? Wow. Mmm. <sighs> Well, can I <laughs> roll out my list? <laughs> but I'll say the first, <laughs> the first thing. The first thing that I hate is the <laughs> is um, when there is no uh, reciprocal communication going on, and so when it's all only one way street. I really dislike that very strongly. Tough question. Many things to hate. Uh, <laughs> however, I. I'm a pretty organized individual. I schedule everything. And I have many, 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 many notes. So when things are not organized, uh, it's very frustrating for me. Mm. Yes. Mm. There are things that I hate. Uh, though I can't say I'm super proud of what I hate. I, I try to like not be very hateful. Um, I try to be more understanding. But I do hate bugs uh, but I I'm working on it there is a spider that lives in my room and you know what I haven't killed him because he has not bothered me so mm. small steps <laughs> mm. I hate well I dislike strongly um, when I, I hate ignorance mm. Ooh. yeah yeah, and sometimes that's ignorance inside myself as well. Like when I'm not aware of how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking, I'm not really in touch with what's going on. Um, and so for me, it's a process of also turning towards that and being like, I actually really don't know at all what's happening here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I think we all deserve, well, I'll save the last um, four, four cards for later, but I think we all deserve a really big round of shaking and <laughs> the <laughs> and the <laughs> and I will explain to you. So one of the things in which and please let's sit down. So I will explain a little bit. So when <laughs> as kids. Um, in um, behavioral psychology, there is a, I, I'm sure that you guys know about it, it's, there is a process of approximating behavior. So there is a reward, there is a P Pavlovian and Skinner mechanism of rewarding a specific behavior. 
And so frequently what happens is that when we're kids, then we want something, but then our parents punish us. And so in my opinion, and I'm curious about your perspective on that, is that part of the non-creative and non-joyful work environment is that much of this parental-child type of relationship, it persist into the workplace because very much so it's um, you're doing something to avoid punishment or you uh, you avoid something that is going to be externally criticized and um, for me personally I feel that my creativity and my joy is strongly diminished when I know that it's a critical way of looking at what I do and um, I'm curious about your experiences about that or maybe something that resonates with you. Yeah, I think that resonates a lot with me. Um, and I guess I would say that it's not just the outer voice of criticism or the outer perception of the adult or the authority figure who is not um, approving or who I'm seeking approval from. There's also a lot of the internalization of that um, that, of course, we all reinforce and contribute to. Um, but I think when I think of when I, my creativity is squashed, um, it first and foremost, I can feel that in my own body. There's a mm -hmm. sense of kind of contraction or tightness or sort of a lack of connectivity and spontaneity within my own emotions, within my own body. And, and so that can come through a dynamic with someone, but, but ultimately um, it's how it's resonating within me. And if I'm having that internal kind of relationship of, I should not, I can't, or I must act in a certain way. That's when I feel like I can't be creative anymore. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm, can I ask you a question? How do you feel it in your body? How do you feel in your body that something doesn't flow? Because mm -hmm. that requires quite a bit of awareness mm -hmm. around your body and how different parts of your body feel and flow or not flow. So how do you develop that? Hmm. just reconnecting continuously to, to the physical body and that can take so many forms. Uh, for me, that's yoga, that's mm. uh, meditation, that's somatically connected. Um, but really any time, of even just sitting here right now, like I can feel the weight of my body against the chair, I can feel the heat, the brightness of the lights, a little bit of perspiration. Um, and I think staying connected to that inner world, is, it's something that it happens, it can happen at any time. It doesn't require like a formal separate practice. Um, but for me, that feels like um, in those instances, I, I feel kind of a, a contraction inwards, almost like the sense of kind of closing in, protection, shame, sometimes um, tightness or stiffness, um, rigidity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to share a little story connected to what you're sharing. I met with a friend today, and he, he is a student, a full-time student, and also a part-time um, employee. And so what he was describing is how he was able, through mindfulness, oh, he's, a, he's a meditator as well, but he also pays attention to how stressed he is, because for many people, stress is, um, is it's a really important question in terms of work, because and physiologically speaking, whenever we are in the stress zone, continuously our creativity is squished because for us to feel open, for the body to relax, we need to be able to come out of this zone of continuously fighting and or fleeing. And so the way he was describing the process for himself is to be aware of what he feels and set boundaries. For instance, his employer and his boss is asking to do more tasks, but he's able through communication and through setting boundaries to say, well, I cannot do this because the quality of my work will compromise. I can do it, but it will be suboptimal and it will also be not up to what you want it to be. And I feel that in many ways it's a responsibility and also um, a gift of a person when you're connecting connected to yourself to be able to say, well, this is too much for me. I cannot do that. Um, and, and he was able to do it in a communicative uh, format, but I think it's an important skill for all of us to know, like, what is too much? Any, any, um, any thoughts to that or uh, creative, 
creative and joyful workplace, what other aspects do you see yourself connecting with? I think to, to that point, um, for some reason what came up as you were speaking was um, self-love mm -hmm. and just caring for ourselves like mm -hmm. in the workplace and, and valuing ourselves, not in like an egotistical, like I'm better than you or I deserve this kind of way, but um, just that setting those boundaries or recognizing like this is how I flourish, this is how I can be creative and enjoy myself and produce good work. Um, I think so many of us carry that sense that we're, we're not worthy somehow or that we're not deserving of ease or of joy or of liberty in our work. And, um, and so it's very hard to ask for that or to really stand by that if we don't, first, if we don't feel that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, how do you guys feel, like in this context or maybe in other ways, how are you able to maintain your... Um, independent self, your sense of self, while also be part of a team, because a lot of the work involves teamwork. Tunde? Uh, I just want to say that, uh, Lindsay, your words and Maria, yours have really resonated with me. Um, I think what came up uh, for me as like a possible solution would be just communication, just trying to have as open and um, you know, honest communication with whoever may be uh, your manager or supervisor and just. So how about I'm your manager now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the bossy look like. So again, again, I gave you this list and you, what's going on? Like your performance is dropping. So. Dropping. Like. So Maria, I, um, I want to be honest with you. I. I really believe in this work, and I really want to, you know, give my all, and I do every single day. Um, however, I feel like work and um, my balance of my work and my mind and um, trying to find creativity in work is difficult when I have many, many responsibilities on my plate. I have looked at you know how like I who perform. Ca who cares? Who cares about creativity? We have a deadline on Monday. We have. <laughs> <laughs> we have a deadline on Monday. I, you're not hired to be creative here. You're hired to do your work. I understand where you're coming from, and I understand that there are a lot of people who depend on you for results. And I want to be able to make your life as easy as possible. However. For me, I believe I can be the best worker to you if I can have the freedom to exercise uh, my creativity in the workplace as long as it is it beneficial to you and everybody else. But I don't understand what you mean by creativity. Like, you keep using this word creativity. Like, what are you talking about? This is, this is a, this is a, like, we're in the marketing research. What type of creativity is in the work? <laughs> Uh, however, uh, along that point, I would like to say that uh, I, I've done that twice uh, to go back to school, and uh, I feel like I had a pretty good job in 2015. Worked at a large corporation, which I won't name for lack of, for fear of being sued, but uh, I wanted to, you know, take on some things that I found interesting and that I was feel like I could add some creativity to and. I've, I've heard a little bit of a uh, um, conversation about fear and mm. doubt. And, you know, I was fearful of quitting that time in 2015 and again in 2017. No, 2018, sorry. When I went back to school again. And, uh, you know, I think part of being creative in your work is not being fearful and being comfortable with doubt. So uh, I quit. I don't know about you. Let me know what you think. I definitely um, do not want to have this conversation because I do have a fear in me that, uh, you know, when I try to communicate what my needs are to you, that, that you will, there will be backlash and that uh, you will not be reciprocating it. Um, 
However, uh, when put on the spot here, I will give my best attempt to explain to you that I think that I can bring value to the company. And I think that I can do that when I'm in my most positive state of mind. Mm -hmm. When I'm happy, I believe that I can, you know, be the most help to you and I can, you know, find out how to make these processes even better. Mm -hmm. However, um, if I am just overloaded with things and I, I, I need to know my limits, I believe. I need to express to you what my limits are so that I can uh, show you what, what I have to offer, what I truly have to offer. <laughs> you know, what was fascinating for me is to see the two different perspectives. And um, because I feel I've been in both situations, and it, I know that on the one hand, there, there's no one solution that is appropriate, right? Because every person feels what is right in an, any given situation. And the common fears around creativity is that, well, if I lose this job, or if I quit at this point, so what is going to happen? The financial aspect is a big question mark for many people. So does creativity need to be in competition with finances, you know, with money? But I also want to interject that money is energy. You know, we think of it as just this commodity that comes, but then what's interesting for me to discover in my life is that for for a lot of the time, I was so used, used to being paid for things I don't like doing. So there was, again, this conditioning inside of me, the association that I get paid only for, for doing things that are work, which feel something somehow oppressive to me. So it's not necessarily what I love doing, but something like you cannot, you cannot love work. And this is something that I've been often told is, well, this is work and you get paid for work. Mm -hmm. And then your creativity, you can go and play after work. But I think in my own personal passion is to combine. You know, one of, the, one of the metaphors or the slogans that I personally use is how to bridge work and play so that they don't, they don't separate from each other. So make your work play mm -hmm. and make your play work. Mm -hmm. And I know that for many pe people, it becomes more like a side outlet where they start making chocolate or hand creams and mm -hmm. um, write kids' books. So this is a beautiful way of doing it like part-time, but I also know that for many people, they start part-time and then they go and develop into a more, like a more mainstream outlet of what is it that they're doing. And, um, and this is what I'm noticing, looking at the trends in the world right now, there are two major trends. More and more people, they go into becoming their own um, solo business owners. They want to try entrepreneurship because um, a lot of the uh, big aspect of creativity is to be able to make your own decisions. So have independence, have uh, the ability to put in new ideas, to improve the process and see what your pot potential is. And the other aspects is that many corporations and organizations, they also need to change the system in terms of what, how the day is structured. So there is a lot of flexibility in terms of the like caring for person's needs or also having some of the free time where uh, a person can work from, from home, for instance. So these trends are reflective of just individual's desire to be his or her own independent entity and bring creativity into, into what they do. So on that note, I have a little uh, game for you. So take a piece of paper and crayons and we'll be using <laughs> we'll be using your left hand which is connected I, I assume that you are right handed right? I am. Okay. So and the so take take crayons and with your left hand, non dominant hand and for those viewers who are participating <laughs> feel free to to bring <laughs> to bring your left hands and join us in this little exercise <laughs> and, and know that you can um, also experiment with yourself. The question for all of us, and I will participate myself along with some humming, um, <laughs> is what are your talents? What are your talents? 
So think of the word talent not necessarily a degree that you're holding, but something broader, something that you really enjoy, like you gain energy from it, you feel rejuvenated, you feel inspired. <laughs> All with the left hand. All with the left hand. <laughs> okay. And go for it. <laughs> go with your left hand. And it's a, it's a good advertisement break while the guys are working there. <laughs> we have major sponsors here. One of the, one of the sponsors is um, the Green Pencil, um, the green, green Pencil Company that produces green pencils. And it wraps them in white pa paper and it gives it um, in sales to any people who have money to buy. So it's a major, major company. So this is the first advertisement, advertisement sponsor. And then and the guys are still working with their left hands. <laughs> and they're writing everything about their talents while I'm talking nonsense here. <laughs> this is one of my talents to just BS people. <laughs> so I think I'll sing another song. <laughs> And the next song will come with movement because as Lindsay told us, it's really important to be in the body. So I'll be in my body, I'll breathe, I'll take a deep breath and I'll feel this breath coming into my feet and up, 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 flowing out and then flowing back in. <laughs> and then I can feel that the energy, of course, everybody's familiar with energy and the energy is moving up the body and up, 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 up like the kids in kindergarten they used to stretch <sighs> and then shake shake the arms and this is actually a free advertisement a free advice to an amazing stretch that you can do at work because even if you're in a workplace you can shake your body you can pick up pencils that cost maybe a few cents and those are amazing tools for you to get into your creative space while we're making jokes about it but the body awareness and anything you can do creatively with a pencil and colors, it is very, very strongly connected to you being able to distress. Whenever you are shaking, whenever you're moving, whenever you're stretching, whenever you're taking a breath, it's all of those ways in which you can give your mind a restful point because so many of us are going around and feeling continuously overwhelmed. So let me pick and how the guys are doing and how much more time do you need? Okay, okay, good. So we'll invite um, us back into the space and let's see what we have. Shall I go first? Please. Okay. Um. So I tried to take your direction and not write the talents that I have that I can put on my resume. Uh, so I will share them with you. The first is empathy. I think I have a pretty good capacity for understanding people's feelings, which I can't put on my resume. You know about that. <laughs> um, writing, I mm -hmm. think that I communicate well through writing. Uh, gratitude, um, I try to tell people when they do things for me that, good things for me, I try to let them know. Or when they do good things on a regular basis, I try to let them know that. Mm -hmm. Hugs, I think I give good hugs. And driving, um, I have a car, and I live in Boston, so I drive people places. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's good to know for the future, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. <laughs> oh, I think I, I didn't get the memo. I actually made a drawing. Um, but the drawing, in its own abstract way, kind of explains my talents. <laughs> so right here, this is Granny Smith apple, because I, I like apples, and that they're green, I'm pretty sure, I'm colorblind. But this is like a, a forested, grassy plain, or a mountain, whatever you make of it, you know, it's very abstract. Uh, you know, I'll be coming to the Institute of Contemporary Art next year but uh here are thought bubbles mm. going up into it and also a sun with a smiley face mm. so basically 
<laughs> I would say that my talents are being uh, intuitive, mm -hmm. being uh, introspective, thoughtful, uh, mindful. I try to consider all possibilities and um, everybody around me, and I, I try. I feel like I, I do a really good job of having fun doing pretty much anything, even nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a couple of mine were surrounding the theme of um, spontaneity and opening doors, making new connections with people, um, so thriving in that space of kind of connectivity and, and living in the moment and, um, and adapting to unexpected things. Like I really enjoy when things go a little bit wrong or I'm faced with a situation and I don't know how to deal with it. I, I like to kind of integrate and problem solve and, um, and make connections with people to, to make something work. Um, so games, friends, um, inspiring people, uh, and a lot around language and communication. So listening as well, but also being able to kind of articulate and reflect from within myself what feels true to me and um, communicating that to people. And that is so beautiful from all of you. So beautiful. And I'm wondering, because Tunde, you mentioned in the beginning that these are not the skills that you can put on your resume necessarily, not all of them, but I'm wondering if this is an important human aspect that needs to be considered as part of joyful and creative workplace environment because um, frequently it's the human beings that are being together and sharing the same workspace that really creates one environment enjoyable and creative and conducive to new ideas, safe communication, um, work with unexpected things, expressing yourself, being intuitive, connecting to people, and then also being able to internalize, think, think deeply. Because those are important qualities that are not necessarily taken care of by education, right? And I'm curious what your thoughts are about that. I have some thoughts. <laughs> uh, so before I came back to school, um, I worked at a job for a year. And prior to being hired, I took a psychological assessment. And uh, it's interesting that you know companies do this. They you know sort of measure people's capacity on various things like maybe caring, creativity, and during the interview I was told that I uh, measured for being, you know, conflict adverse, uh, which is, you know, that's my nature, that's generally how I am, but I also found it interesting that they li like that, you know. So, um, just kind of talking around your point a little bit, but mm -hmm. I, find it, I found it interesting that they're not actually looking for something more in line with you know, just human interaction and human sort of empathy. And, uh, you know, they just wanted to be sure that I wasn't going to challenge them, you know. Instead of testing for my empathy or kindness or caring or creativity. So it's interesting that companies do look for sort of like things that you can't put on your resume, but still not things that we at least us for value. Does that make sense? Well, I'm curious also, like, to push you a little bit further, if you don't mind, on this point. Sure. To, to s because from the perspective of the employers, right, mm -hmm. um, I think that there is a value that is a little bit maybe hidden. And so what is your idea of why creativity is important at work or, and part of those qualities, part of those talents? Because creativity is not necessarily narrow-minded in, well, I express art well, or I'm a writer, or I'm a music, or, or a composer. Because I personally define creativity outside of the arts yeah. framework. It's more of the mindset, flexibility of the mindset, and being able to look at situation uh, from different angles. So what is the value, if you were to articulate from yourself um, to the employer of considering those human qualities? 
Well, with regard to creativity, I mean, I, I think it drives innovation mm -hmm. and, you know, invention. Um, I have to refer to the lovely Amazon, the conglomerate organization, uh, which, you know, I, I do have issues with the fact that it's such a huge company that kills other companies. Uh, please don't sue me, Amazon. But, <laughs> but you know, I don't, I don't know what the workplace is like, but they are consistently doing new things, mm -hmm. and that potentially has something to say about why they're worth, you know, almost a trillion dollars. They are pushing innovation. You know, they're talking about using um, drones to deliver packages, and I don't think it has to be just on a company-wide level. It can be on an individual employee basis you know if you just cultivate creativity you can drive innovation and you know oftentimes creativity can lead to a dead end mm -hmm. other times it can lead to something great that is what I would try to tell them <laughs> you know it's interesting thank you for sharing that because um, I know that some companies Amazon as well as some other top companies they encourage in fact um, employers to make mistakes so just go and explore whatever it is that you want to do is and then even if you fail you know in the framework of success failure dichotomy but the idea is that you tried and you've experimented and this is why we are supporting your creativity here and this is one aspect of it and so the framework of right and wrong and uh, returning back to a little bit of a child like play right so merging the boundaries between work and play so instead of focusing on the outcome encouraging the process uh, knowing that maybe only five percent of the trials will lead to something fruitful yeah but those five percent it could be hugely amazing absolutely so don't want to sort of like tamp those down let's encourage them <laughs> brother i'm curious because you you were you were convincing me to keep you employed <laughs> <laughs> i'll improve your process <laughs> i definitely say there's been uh, some amount of a shift in mindset, at least in the tech industry, with um, companies like Amazon and then you know Google, how they, you know, there's like everybody's talking about, oh, they have like pool tables and you know a gym at their workplace and all that stuff. I think what it really comes down to is investing in the human, investing in the worker as a human and not as a machine. You know, they're not like people are not like printers, you know, <laughs> you, you know, just put an input in and then you get the same thing out every time. Everybody has all these very unique experiences, all these, you know, when you meet this 25-year-old, they have had an entire childhood of experiences that's unique from pretty much everyone else in the world. I mean, at, at some point in time, it has to deviate, right? But, um, and from that, from all those experiences, you get this consciousness that can somehow create um, create something that's bigger than itself Some, mm -hmm. create something that's um, special and that nobody else has ever thought of and so to invest in the human that's is is to imp, you know is to uh, encourage creativity in the workplace is to allow your team to kind of work together and um, put their heads together and create something, um, you know, novel, something that sets them apart from just a bunch of cogs in a wheel, you know, putting the same input and output uh, for a standard, like a standardized process. Whereas if you allow everybody to, you know, some people have greater tolerances for workload than others and other people might, you know, there's, there's different ways. It's more difficult this way, of course for the manager, <laughs> but um, I believe it is much more fruitful to um, organize your workplace in such a way where everybody is able to function at their, um, at their peak level, at least consciously and creatively. It's, yeah. um, it's, I think it's uh, brilliant some of the points you, you've made because um, you're really talking about a different organizational structure. It's not hierarchical, top down, but it's, m it's more spread out. And the feeling that I'm getting is that it's the skills of a manager is not necessarily how to um, 
only be the expert in the field, but mostly how to be an organizer. So how to be a facilitator of several people that are coming together to create something. Because the consciousness and experiences you've talked about, it's not necessarily that people are thinking in the same way, but it's how to pull those talents that you guys were talking about and how to pull them together. And in my view, you know, the more we tap into talents and the more we, we are connecting through communication and through interaction with each other, then the more progress we can make. Because I've, um, I've personally always benefited from discussions and from tapping into people's experiences. So I am actually curious, and, and we'll start with Lindsay on this one, but, I'm, but I want to introduce another question, which is along your life path, um, think of maybe one situation that you, you feel that you've learned that brought you to the point in your professional career where you're now. Something you've learned, like maybe something specific that you've learned and you want to share that with the world. And it may be one skill you've learned, one in the context of joyful and creative living. What was inspiring for you? What shifted? It might have been a sad experience, but it still inspired you to do something. It might have been a challenging experience, but it inspired you to where you are now in your life. <laughs> you seemed excited. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think this one is not that unique, but it is meaningful for me because uh, I may have mentioned already I'm new to Boston as of, I guess, three months now. Prior to that, I was new to Washington, D.C. Uh, in 2017. And prior to that, I had lived in Atlanta and grew up in Atlanta for 12 years. And uh, moving to D.C. and then Boston is, you know, I had to get out of my comfort zone. I got very comfortable in Atlanta, had lots of friends and lots of food places I liked that I frequented. Um, but I really took on the mindset of getting out of my comfort zone, not just in moving cities, but in all experiences that I could apply it to. Some of it is a sort of communication, uh, you know, speaking with managers or friends and willing to be uncomfortable and, you know, just kind of teaching yourself to enjoy being mm. uncomfortable, you know, just, mm. just love it, you know, <laughs> just, uh, uh, <laughs> But to that. <laughs> no, I, I think that, you know, if you just, for me, if I, I, if I can just sort of like, because I know that if I'm uncomfortable, I'm learning something, mm -hmm. you know. So I've just, you know, now I just kind of enjoy it. Now I'm just like, you know, whatever I can do to get a little bit uncomfortable, try something new and. You know, I'll just deal with it after. So I think this is a great end. point. I think creativity yeah. and joy, part of it, is continuously stretching mm -hmm. and getting out of what is familiar. I cannot agree, <laughs> agree more with that. Um, anyone else? Um, so uh, your question brought to mind when I was working as a cycling trip leader. Um, I did that for a couple of years in Italy. So people would come on vacations and they paid a lot of money to come. They usually had these high, high profile jobs, lots of lawyers and doctors and corporate people. And um, when they came on these vacations, they were expecting to just be able to have an amazing time and totally disconnect. And, um, and meanwhile, while these people were having their like trip of a lifetime, I was the guide. And while, you know, as a guide, you always tried to make it as smooth and easeful and fun and playful for the guests as possible, but you're actually working really, really hard. And when things go wrong um, or when you're having a bad day, like that, that's your work. And you're, it's just this interesting situation where you're, you're working with people who are having fun and on vacation, but you're actually working really hard. Um, and so I think one of the things that that taught me was this concept that like work-life balance isn't, we, we try so hard to balance work and life, but like you were saying with play, that work is life, and we try to live through our work. And as a guide, it was very obvious that in order to have the best experience for my guests, but also for myself, it was just to embrace whatever was happening, and that 
when I found myself resisting my own experience at work in this beautiful Italian countryside, because believe it or not, that happened, um, that was always, that was what was the problem. And I feel like I would always try to make it into something else, like think that the problem was elsewhere, or that as soon as I got rid of my guests who were really annoying, that like life would be great. Um, but that that was me constructing my own resistance and like not really letting it flow. Um, and so learning, frankly, from a lot of Italian men who were very you know, stereotypical, <laughs> as you might expect, like just very suave and like could charm anyone. It didn't matter what they said. One of my, one of my co-guides, he told one of our clients that he was too fat to go up the hill. And they, were, they thought it was hilarious. They were like, that is great, you know, because he's Italian. But anyway, so I, I couldn't get away with that. But just to find that sense of, like, joy and, and playfulness right where I was and to not try to think it was elsewhere um, and to learn and to witness a lot of my own guests, even though they were on vacation, struggling to actually really enjoy, enjoy the moment um, or to, to know that they were going back to this other life that was really difficult and feeling like, you know, my work and my life are both united here and, and to learn how to live through my work. You know what is fascinating from a lot of these experiences that you're sharing, um, Lindsay, what you shared, Tunde, and then from the uh, previous round of, of sharing, it's that even though we're talking about restructuring some of the outside situations, a lot of the things you're discussing is how to in the process shift the inner attitude because even, t even though we're talking about joy, and creativity, everybody has mentioned that they're enjoying going towards fears, stretching into the uncomfortable, or embracing the situation as it is. So it feels that part of the joyful and creative work environment is to have those challenges. Is that it's not about having an, an environment that is perfectly flowing and perfectly functioning, conflict free, but those frictions is what actually helps us to grow as individuals because I can think of so many like millions of examples where I could shift nothing on the outside completely and the only way I could deal with the situation was to shift my mindset and work through my own resistance around what is creating the workflow and then thinking well only if I have a different job right then things will be perfectly and so funny that I started my own business um, several years ago thinking that well if I work for myself and if I don't work for the organization I will just be on the Bahamas like you know mm -hmm. resting <laughs> and doing nothing <laughs> and sitting back and money will flow into my bank account <laughs> and I will just you know go on Amazon and order <laughs> and order the most expensive things that I desire <laughs> soon to be disappointed that I needed to work my ass off <laughs> for every penny <laughs> it works so, it took so much effort and work but the funny the funny thing about it is that I never regret doing that and I'm still doing it with so much pleasure but what I'm knowing is that when I'm embracing it as the process of, of my inner growth then I know that I am evolving as a human being no matter what my job environment is and so now I'm like wearing different hats you know, working for an, or an organization, for a university, I have my own business. And so at the same time, I'm noticing parallels that if I resist work at the organization, at work, that even when I'm doing my own things that I enjoy tremendously, but if I'm resisting something outside of me, uh, nothing is happening. Like, and for me, the process of finding joyful self-expression and creativity has all been in a work in a work continuously and continuously and continuously so we're going to you know wrap up in a moment but it's interesting with that we started and we go into like we move through so many layers of this and if you in one word you could say what you took out from all of this experience about joyful and creative living just one word takeaway for all of us and our guests let it just flow in because we have limited time. Um, common humanity. <laughs> nice. Attitude. Wow. <laughs> Joy of sharing. Uh, work.
plus play <laughs> equals play plus work. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think we all deserve a great round of applause for ourselves. Should we end with the song? <laughs> <laughs> we can sing the song, but I think you, uh, you guys cut, right? Or uh, do, we have, do we have still a little bit of time for a song? Yeah. Hey, hey Jude, Jude <laughs> don't beat me down. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let it into your heart, and you can start <laughs> to make it better, 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 better. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. It's been such a great pleasure <laughs> having you on the show. And we hope we, you got some inspirational ideas about joy, creativity, and how it might apply to your own workplace. And um, if you have any questions and you want to connect, it's www. And we're caught here. <laughs> but I think the website is on the subtitles. <laughs> M-A-R-I-Y-A-S-H-I-Y-K-O dot love. Maria Shiko dot love. And um, have a wonderful night, everybody. Pleasure to have you with us. And thank you to all of our guests. They were amazing. <laughs>